Hi, my name is Bryn Boslett, and I am one of the infectious disease doctors at the University of California, San Francisco. And today I'm going to be discussing with you some of the characteristics of primary and secondary skin lesions within the necrotizing fasciitis module. By the end of this session, you should be able to describe the components of the integumentary system. You should also be able to define several of the primary skin lesions, including a macule, patch, plaque, papule, vesicle, bulla, pustule, and wheel. And finally, you should be able to define several of the secondary skin lesions that I will discuss, including scale, crust, lichenification, erosion, ulcer, and fissure. Our skin is the largest organ of our bodies and forms the integumentary system, which is composed of multiple layers of tissue and associated glands plus appendages that provide defense against the outside environment. The skin can generally be divided into three broad layers, the epidermis, dermis, and the hypodermis. Briefly, the epidermis is the outermost avascular layer of skin that contains mostly keratinocytes, which are keratin-filled epithelial cells, but also contains pigment-producing melanocytes, immunologic Langerhans cells, and neuroendocrine Merkel cells. The dermis lies below the epidermis and contains many structures, including connective tissue, vessels, hair follicles, sweat and sebaceous glands, and nerve endings called mechanoreceptors that enable sensation. Below the dermis, the hypodermis contains the main vascular and lymphatic supply, as well as adipose tissue. So when the skin is affected by disease, one or all of these layers may be involved. Diseases affecting the skin can manifest in a number of ways. Some skin lesions are a result of localized damage to the skin while other lesions represent cutaneous manifestations of a systemic disease or process. A primary skin lesion is one that originates from previously normal skin and is directly associated with a disease process. Primary lesions are rarely specific to a single disease entity. However, correctly naming the primary lesions whenever possible is the first step towards identification of the disease or process that's causing the lesion. This is why you should always strive to describe skin lesions with detailed dermatological terminology, which we will introduce here. Primary lesions include the macule, patch, papule, nodule, plaque, vesicle, bulla, and pustule. So let's define each of those terms now. A macule is simply a change in the color of the skin. It is totally flat, And if you were to close your eyes and run your fingers over the surface of a purely macular lesion, you could not detect it. A macule greater than one centimeter at its widest dimension may be referred to as a patch. A papule is a solid raised lesion that has distinct borders and is less than one centimeter in diameter. Papules may have a variety of shapes and profile. They may be domed, flat topped, or umbilicated and they may be associated with secondary features, such as crusts or scales, which we will describe in a moment. A papule that is flat-topped and greater than one centimeter in diameter is called a plaque. It is analogous to the geographical plateau in its shape. If a papule is larger than one centimeter but is not flat, it is called a nodule. The depth of involvement is another characteristic that differentiates a nodule from a papule. While papules are typically more superficial, nodules may arise from the epidermis, dermis, or the subcutaneous tissue. Endophytic nodules may start deep or more superficially, but then grow inwards into the tissues, while exophytic nodules grow outward beyond the layer from which they originate. A papule or plaque may sometimes form in association with skin trauma or allergy. This is called a wheel. An example is pictured here. Wheels reflect circumscribed dermal edema, which means fluid collection in the layer of skin below the surface. 
In association with allergy, wheels may be intensely pruritic, meaning itchy. This is otherwise known as hives. Wheels also tend to be evanescent, which means characteristically resolving within 24 to 48 hours. In contrast to a wheel, a vesicle is a circumscribed fluid containing epidermal lesion that is usually not transient. They may occur in association with an allergic response, autoimmune condition, or viral infection. When these fluid-filled lesions grow to greater than a centimeter in diameter, they are known as bulla. Sometimes, instead of clear, serous fluid, these lesions contain white-yellow pus. In this case, the lesions are called pustules. Here are a few examples of the lesions we just discussed, so let's review. Macules, or patches if larger, are a change in skin color, which may be hyperpigmented, meaning darker than the surrounding skin, or hypopigmented, meaning lighter than surrounding skin. The macule pictured in this example is tinea versicolor, a superficial fungal infection. Papules are solid, raised lesions that have distinct borders and are less than one centimeter in diameter. Moles, also known as nevi, warts, eczema, skin tags, and many other skin conditions can present with papules. Nodules or plaques are similar to papules, except that they are larger and occasionally deeper in their origin and extent. Again, there are many different causes of nodules, including trauma, infection, and skin cancer. Vesicles are basically papules that are fluid-filled instead of solid. One very classic example of a vesicular rash is pictured here, herpes zoster, also known as shingles. This is caused by the reactivation of varicella zoster virus. Bulla, or plural bullae, are larger vesicles, which again may be seen in association with a variety of conditions, including simple friction blisters. Pictured here is one example of a bullous skin condition known as bullous pemphigoid, which is an autoimmune disease. Pustules are vesicles that are filled with pus. Acne is a common example of a pustular skin condition. Pictured here is folliculitis, an infection involving hair follicles. Secondary skin lesions can result from changes to the primary lesion over time. They can be caused by disease progression, manipulation such as scratching, picking, or rubbing, or by successful treatment of the primary lesion. Let's talk about a few secondary skin lesions now. Scales consist of visible flakes or plates of compact, desquamated layers of stratum corneum, which is the outermost layer of the epidermis. Desquamation, otherwise known as peeling, usually occurs after an acute injury to the skin, sometimes as part of the healing process. Scales may also occur in association with certain types of medical skin conditions like psoriasis. Crusting is the result of the drying of liquid debris, such as plasma or pus, onto the surrounding skin. It may form after the rupture of vesicles or pustules. One example is the honey-colored crusts that are associated with impetigo, a bacterial skin condition that we will discuss in upcoming modules. Lichenification refers to a thickening of the epidermis seen over time with exaggeration of normal skin lines, and it is usually due to chronic rubbing or scratching of an already inflamed area. A fissure is a linear cleavage of skin which extends through the epidermis and into the dermis or deeper. It is often caused by repetitive trauma to the skin and may occur in association with other medical conditions. One example is Crohn's disease, an inflammatory bowel disorder that is associated with anal fissures. Erosions are the loss of superficial layers of epidermis. Like fissures, they may occur in association with repetitive friction or trauma. Aside from trauma, erosions may also be formed after a vesicle or pustule has opened and drained leaving behind the shallow lesions pictured here. Ulcers are similar to erosions, but deeper, extending into the dermis and sometimes all the way down to the muscle and bone. Many ulcers start as erosions and then progress. Ulcers may form as the result of repetitive trauma or pressure. They may sometimes become secondarily infected with bacteria, 
or in some cases, they may even begin at the site of an initial bacterial inoculation, such as with syphilis or cutaneous anthrax. We will discuss more specific details about the distinguishing features of bacterial skin infections in future modules. Thank you so much for your time and attention.